are the top five mistakes to avoid when asking for a job referral, and I'll leave you with one top recommendation before we go. My friends, there are a lot of people out there hurting for jobs, especially in the data industry. A lot of people out there are talking about it's a weird job market, it's a tough job market. The bottom line is there are a lot of people that aren't able or aren't being successful getting jobs in the old fashioned way. What's the old fashioned way? You study real hard, you get a degree, you do a boot camp, you put in a bunch of applications, do some interviews, get jobs. It's not working for a lot of people for whatever reason. So I've talked about this before. There is a hidden job network. Estimates vary as to how many jobs or what percentage of the good jobs out there are allocated through this hidden job network, but it's significant. I think pretty much everyone can agree on that. You need to figure out how you can tap into that hidden job network, or there are going to be a large percentage of the best jobs available, especially in tech, that and just so aren't going to be available to you. People know that referrals or internal referrals are kind of a key to getting those jobs. If you can get someone from within the company that's hiring to refer you or recommend you for that job, you have a huge advantage. Some places that will almost guarantee an interview. And once you get into the interview, then it's on you to successfully get the job. Oftentimes a referral, depending on the person in the company, is enough to just get the job without an interview process. So these things are very valuable and very important. And there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of faux pas and kind of little ignorant screw ups trying to get referrals. Let me guide you away from some of the worst things that I see out there in the job market and try to redirect you onto some best practices. The number five top mistake to avoid when asking for a job referral is showing ignorance. I get a lot of messages and a lot of requests from people that don't call me by name. They talk about your company they ask me for referrals to jobs that don't exist or for roles that we don't use at my company. They refer to my company, whether it's Bellamy Consulting or Alteryx, and don't even know what we do for a business. My friends, you cannot show ignorance when connecting or when asking for a referral. You've got to do your homework. At a bare minimum, look up my name, the name of the company, and the roles that are available, what kind of business we do. I know that this takes a little bit longer. I know that there are people out there trying to be efficient. They're trying to fire the same message to 100 different opportunities, contacts, companies, whatever. That drives your chances of success way down. If you do your homework and you tailor those messages a little bit, you're going to get a much higher per message success rate. And you're going to be able to get referrals at a higher rate. The number four biggest mistake to avoid when asking for a job referral is being vague about your request. When you say, do you know of any opportunities? You have already failed. This includes your green banner post where you throw it out to your network and you say, help me. I'm out of a job. Do you know of any opportunities? Look over my skill set and let me know if you got anything from me. You've already failed. Why? Because you're being lazy. You're making that other person or maybe many other persons do the work for you. You look at my skill set. You review my resume. You figure out what jobs there are. You do the work. Be specific about who you are, what you bring to the table, and what you want. What can you offer? What is your specialty? What job can you do? What are you looking for? Or what are you looking for? Have you checked? What drives me nuts is people will come to me and say, are there jobs at your company? And then they'll name my company. I don't know. Have you checked the website? There's a careers page on there, just like there is on just about every company's website. If you go on there and you say, I feel like I am a fit for this data engineer job. Awesome. Now we've started a conversation. But you can't be vague. You have to be specific about what it is you want. The number three biggest mistake to avoid when asking for a job referral is being transactional. 
If it's clear that the only reason you're talking to me is to get a job referral, this makes people a little angry and skeeved out. And that's when you get ghosted by people. A lot of times what happens, somebody will request a connection with me. Even if they don't send me a message, I always send one back. It may not be super personal. I don't always have time for that. But I'll at least say, hey, Steve, thanks for the connection. Great to meet you. What's up? I would say about 60% of the time, they don't answer even that basic of a message. So when you come to me and you say, hey, can you refer me for this job? Even if you're not doing any of the other things wrong, you're specific about the job, I'd like to be a data engineer, I see there's an opening at your company. First thing I do is scroll up on that message log if I don't immediately recognize your name. If the last time we spoke was January of 2022, and the only message we exchanged was me saying, hey, Steve, thanks for the connection. We're not meaningful connections. I don't know you, and therefore I'm not going to refer you. And it's clear that the only reason you're talking to me now is because you're out of work or you want a job that you think I can get for you. My friends, every opportunity that I've gotten through my network in the limited time that I've been out of the military has been through being altruistic. You've got to seek first to be helpful. Some of the opportunities I've gotten have come through working with veterans causes and organizations. Some of them have been by, by being a fan. I was a fan of a podcast and I started talking to the podcaster and eventually I got on the podcast and that opened up opportunities for me. You've got to be friendly with people and you've got to offer of yourself. Seek first to be helpful. People help people they like, and you're not going to get to like somebody that's just always take, take, take. you got to give as well. So don't be transactional. Seek first to be a good person and be helpful to somebody else, and then they're going to want to help you out in return. The number two biggest mistake when asking for a job referral is, as David Goggins said, you don't know me, son. Asking people that don't know you or your work for a job referral. To understand this, we have to understand the nature of a job referral. It's an endorsement. You're vouching for somebody. If somebody asks me to work at my company and I go in and put in a referral for them and that person comes in and fails and gets fired, it reflects poorly on me. And then I've wasted my good word on a person that wasn't likely to succeed. And the next time I refer somebody, the hiring process, HR, whoever, they're not likely to listen to me. When I put in for my current job, a friend of mine named Josh gave me a referral. He and I were both Marines. We had met in person. We were friends as well as professional colleagues. He was happy to give me a referral. I felt like it made a difference. I eventually got hired at the company. That's how you do it. You have to cultivate relationships. People have to know you personally and professionally at least in a remote sense before they're going to give you a referral that actually means anything. Now, below that, you have just kind of purely transactional referrals. I have talked to people that say, I refer anybody that's in my network, my professional network on LinkedIn. Hey, awesome. But that just means that your referrals don't really carry much weight. So seek first to develop a relationship with the person and then they will understand you and your worth and be able to give you a good referral. We've come to the end. The number one mistake to avoid when asking for a job referral is coming in hot. We call it the pitch slap. This means you request a referral in either the first or second message that you exchange with somebody immediately, either before or upon connecting. Friends, I get this all the time. Here's what happens. If the person is at least polite, I will still accept the connection. But I immediately archive the chat. I generally will, will give the person a form message that I've concocted that says, I don't refer people that I don't know well. Thank you anyway. Feel free to carry on the conversation. 99 times out of 100, I never hear from them again. Instead, you've got to at least start a conversation. This is a lesson that I learned in the military and on deployment. When I went to Iraq and I was working with the Iraqi army, the Arab people, the Iraqi people, they're just, they're a little different. And as a military man, you're used to just going in and saying, hey, what's up? And you get straight down to business. The Iraqi people, including the Iraqi army, were not like that. 
And we learned very quickly that we had to, in order to get something done, to get a mission accomplished, to get cooperation, we had to go in and we had to talk to them. Friendly conversation, no matter what rank they were or what rank I was, you would start with, how are you? How is your family? How is your health? How is your household? How is all things non-military? I hate to say it, but that's kind of the price you've got to pay for a meaningful connection. If you're an introvert, if you're not social, you're not really into that, we've all got hills to climb and things to overcome that aren't necessarily our forte. I am not necessarily a, a terribly social person myself, but I understand that in order to develop the relationships, in order to build the trust and the, the social connection with a person that is going to bear fruit, whether that's purely social or professional, you kind of get to know them first. So don't give them the pitch slap, start a conversation with that person. Seek first to be a good person and to be friendly. Okay, so now we've got five things not to do, and I kind of turned all of them around to let you know what to do instead. Here's one recommendation, and it kind of ties everything together. So, one thing to do when trying to gain job referrals. Get buy-in. I've talked about this through a couple of the different points, but you need to gain buy-in from the person. You need to invest in them and have them invest in you. How do you start that? Find a personal touch point. Did you perhaps go to the same college? Did you both do a data boot camp? Do you know somebody in their network that may be friends with them? Can you talk about that person? There's lots of different things. Can you engage with their content? Do they produce videos on YouTube? Do they write a blog? Can you go read their latest entry or watch their latest video and come talk to them about your thoughts about it? Once you've gained a personal touch point with that person and exchanged a couple of messages, my recommendation is hit them with a small request. Obviously, at some point, you're going to ask them for a connection, maybe even right when you start the conversation, but you can ask them for little things. Can you look at my profile and give me a tip or two about the visuals or my about section? Can you look at my resume and tell me if it's ordered correctly? Ask for something specific, not open-ended. What advice do you have? Again, you're being lazy, you're being vague, and you're putting the onus on the other person to try and figure out what it is you need. So a small and specific request gains a little bit more buy-in and trust from the other person. Then offer them something of value. What can you do for them? Again, don't be vague and lazy. Don't tell them, hey, if you ever need anything from me, mm -mm. that's everybody knows that's BS. That's not a real offer. Offer them something specific of value. Do you have a few data sets that need to be cleaned or validated? Do you, um, do you need some Python work done? Do you, whatever. But what can you do well that that person might need? Nine times out of 10, they're probably going to say no. They probably don't need that specific thing. Or even if they do, they would probably pay somebody to do it anyway. Maybe they'll pay you. But it's the offer that counts. Seek first to be helpful and friendly, and you're going to develop that relationship. Where you take it from there is on you. Friends, building a network and gaining referrals is a long game. And I can already hear the arguments in the comments. I don't have time for that. I get it. You may not have time to start and develop relationships with people that, from whom you would like referrals between now and when you need to bring in your next paycheck. However, always say you don't plant crops when it's time to eat the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the second best time is today somebody said that's a chinese proverb i don't know but it's something you hear and it has wisdom networking is continuous the worst thing you can do is get a job bail on linkedin and then a year later when it, that job gets downsized or something happens and you get laid off you realize holy crap I haven't talked to anyone in my network in a year because I was just so busy grinding hard at my job. Don't do that. Devote some time to networking and building relationships before you need to cash in those chips and say, can you help me? I need a referral. I'd like this job. 
if you do that, if you put in that investment somewhat consistently, it's going to bear fruit for you. If you build relationships, if you make some friends, I always boil it down to, hey, get out there and make some friends, people. And it seems simple, but that's really what it's about. When you get out there and you seek to be helpful and friendly first, that's when those referrals and those opportunities are going to come your way. Friends, I hope that was helpful. Please, if you enjoy this content, leave a like on the post. Throw a comment below. What would you like to see in future? Subscribe to the channel. Semper Fidelis, and I'll talk to you later.